Christopher Hagner is J A M E S. Christopher Hagner, H A G N E R. I live at 2156 Deerfield Way in Scarborough, Pennsylvania, 18355. <clears throat> Good evening, everybody. Gentlemen. <clears throat> Summary of events regarding incidents, corruption, and situations going on in Monroe County and Pueblo Township, PA and how everything is directly and indirectly affecting our family. Our family has harassed and slandered, targeted, condemned and embarrassed, put down, let down, belittled, and we refuse to accept this any further. No one, any authority should feel they're above the law and play games with families, lives, and children's safety. And 11 month old baby died on May 1st, 2019, which was my children's siblings last year, which could have been prevented and a life could have been saved four to five years ago if the chief of police had been more passionate regarding the matters regarding the situation with my daughter, Jasmine Hagner. Due to the incompetence and vindictiveness and spitefulness of certain entities and authorities from Monroe County, PA Township, Township Police Department, I found out recently that it is all over personal vendetta that Chief of Police has against me personally due to this. He refuses to do the right thing with any situation that goes out of his way to help, to help us because he thinks I had him kicked out of a hunting club several years ago I did not know this man at the time, nor did I even hunt with him. I have a witness that will be testifying that I, will use as a, that I was used as a patsy. As this reason, I was kicked out of the club. Even since then, we were slandering, de defaming, and de degrading my family and my family for five years ago. We went as far as threatening my life and my wife that was pregnant, who is here now, time outside of the town hall meeting here five years ago, and threatened my life outside. He came inside the township meeting. I had to ask you people to please escort me out because he would not leave. He was drunk. Jerry Latowski, you were telling him to shut up at the time of the meeting while the news was here. At that time, I was never, he's saying, I was never 9 11 and I am not terminally ill. He refused any help. My two daughters that were raped, my daughters were brutally raped by their sister. Nothing was done about it. I'm terminally ill. He refuses and, he, and he's slandering me that I am terminally ill. He refused to help me with my two daughters that were raped and molested by their older sister, who resides in Arizona under DCS care. She is named, which her name was involved with. Our past and present incidents, cases, and situations have already been reported to the following entities, agency. We have done our very best to follow the chain of command for each, each situation listed below to document, however, everything has been being handled under the last past nine years. There is a lot of corruption where I live. There are amazing authorities doing their jobs with passion, dignity, and honor, and respect. And there are, uh, there are authorities that either belong in jail or to be fired. There are good old boys who are not ethical, professional, or appropriate anymore, it seems, in our town and our county, who has known and what was, who has made this difference. Pocono Township Police Department, Chief Count Workhouse, Sergeant Sean Goucher, and Detective Earl Ackerman. I can go on about whoever else is here. State Constable. These are all the people that have been in, in Pennsylvania Game Commission, Monroe County, the board commanders, everybody's been emailed, the Monroe County District Attorney, the FBI is involved, Mario Scavello, Governor Tom Wolf, Lieutenant Governor, and Heather, Attorney State General's office is involved. Bullard City Police Department, Bullard City's DS, DCS, and Phoenix, Vanessa Kahn, juvenile, she is the caseworker. See, the bottom line is this, my daughter, if she wasn't, if Chief Workhouse would have done the right thing back five years ago when my daughter was brutally raped, my two kids, Jasmine would have never made it out to Arizona. She missed 60 days of school while she was here. My daughter also was under, under care through Devereaux and was, did not have food. She, met, she regarded, did not have 30. My ex-wife refused 13 drug tests and other things that had gone on. Because of that, a, a year ago, a baby died. A little more adult died under Jasmine's care. And I'm shaking, I'm sorry, but under her care out in Arizona. It could have been, it could have been stopped if something here would have been helped but it wasn't prevented. I found it hard and corrupt when the home was zoned for art. So we're gonna go back to now, the beginning when I moved here. My house was zoned for six bedrooms, four beds. This township had it in here for three bedrooms, two beds. Right from the beginning, since I moved here 10 years ago, it started from the beginning. Whoever the building is, whoever in charge of the building, well, I don't know how the hell, uh, uh, what do you call it? My, my paperwork showed from classic quality homes, six bedrooms, four beds. The art township said, Three bedrooms, two beds. So my whole septic system was a complete, it's all illegal. So then I had out Jeff Durney, you all know who he is. Durney Esquire is my trust attorney. So with him being involved, it got squared away. My house got squared away, but it took a long time. I didn't have the orders to go into my house. I didn't even have 
you won't allow me to stay in my house without a the paperwork that you had when you when you moved into your home and I didn't have it. So all I know is is that the township allowed me to live in my home when it was illegal. Now how it was illegal is beyond me because like I said my paperwork showed six bedrooms, four beds. Now we're gonna go with <coughs> the Trump. five minutes. Okay, I'm sorry. Hi, my name is Sarah Edner. Address is 2156 Deerfield Way, Scotland, PA 18355. So, um, yeah, there was a lot of issues when my husband first bought the house. Um, the house was placed in a trust for the children with his 9-11 money. Um, there was a lot of things going on with Judge Tom Olson. Um, Eddie Hoff said um, there was $10,000, I guess, that ended up with a certified bank check with Michael Sledge and some issues that had gone on. Um, our home is in a 200-year dynasty trust, so we tried to even put a pool permit, get it done last year, and we weren't able to. We found that lot lines were running through our bedroom, but then we had to pay over $2,500 to have it surveyed out of our pockets and found out that the lot lines from the township were wrong. And it's crazy because when we had everything re-surveyed, um, we actually had, could have had our pool put in. And um, I talked to, um, I forgot the name of the company that we used, but they were really nice and they redid the whole, like the whole survey. And they actually started doing our neighbors and we found out that a lot of, there was a lot of issues. So I don't know if that's something that can be addressed but um, we would like to get our pool permit done. So um, some of the other situations we were dealing with is, yes, Ken Wertowser did threaten our lives outside of one of the township meetings back a few years ago. Actually, I was pregnant with our four-year-old, so going back almost five years ago. And he didn't help us when my husband's two youngest daughters were raped by the older sister. Now we're trying to get her back here in Pennsylvania. There's a UCCJEA Act. We're trying to enforce it. Um, she actually should be under Pennsylvania's jurisdiction. He had an emergency custody order provided to him back about three years ago, almost four years ago now. Um, she was taken out of her mother's care. Her mo their mother actually um, abandoned his three children that they had from their marriage. And now she had two other children. Um, she lost the baby, which was 11 months old. Unfortunately, she drowned in the toilet in Phoenix, Arizona, which was heartbreaking. It was devastating. And right now, we're just going through a lot. So, um, um, I have been talking to a lot of my friends, um, neighbors, and a lot of folks in the township residents. There's a lot of people that are really upset with how things have been going on with the contract with the police. I have friends that actually are wives of the officers, and I have friends that are officers that work here. And it's been really sad because I have some of our friends are saying that they fear for their families, for their lives, of what's going on in the world because the world's kind of going crazy. And we feel the same way because we've had some threats that were made towards our family coming from the police department, from certain police members and officers and families. And we have five kids of our own to protect. And our safety is just as important as theirs. So we would like to see some changes go on. If Chief Workhauser is able to threaten people drunk outside of a meeting and just hiding literally outside the door that day, and to this day we're still having issues, and we found out that this is, we have an actual state witness that's willing to go forward with the FBI, which we have a meeting coming up with. Um, we're meeting up with April Phillips from Scranton. And she's having us transferred to another office in another county because I guess someone from the Monroe County office, I guess there's someone that there's work, they're working together, so they needed to transfer us somewhere else for conflict of interest. Um, we had brought certain things to their attention. We had some issues back in, um, when Chris Staples was here. Um, obviously, he's not here anymore, but he had probed me in an inappropriate way walking into a courtroom. When Judge Olson was in office, um, like there's things that need to be changed. I was talking to Judge um, Olson's office and he had wanded me and he literally put it between my crotch and he did it disrespectfully. And then we were there only because I had $750 stolen from a, literally a heroin junkie that was a manager at the Log Cabin Bar and Grill who I was assistant manager at the time and it was my son's Christmas money. 
So I ended up there because my husband stood up to this guy who was a bully, literally, and my husband had his finger like to his chest and said, I don't know who you think you are, but you really need to pay my wife, my girlfriend. At the time, it was, we were boyfriend-girlfriend. And um, we ended up in court over it because they only showed one angle. So, and it has to do, Chris Staples actually tried to not have us go to court, but Officer Ducto happened to be there. Like, he was the second officer that responded to the phone call, because we both called. And um, it was just kind of like a mess. But then there's Rob Freena, who's amazing. And he, anytime we've had an issue, he's with my husband on the side playing. Their daughter was thrown out of the second floor window by her older sister before I was even with him. Officer Freena has been there every time, I mean, like within minutes. He's gotten my husband to a hospital when there was, when you know how Edie gets jacked up with traffic? He has gone above and beyond. Like, there's really great officers that are here. This but there's, here yeah. Well. I'm sorry, okay. Thank you. Any other public comments? Yeah. I have a comment on the phone. Can you identify yourself, please? them online, ma'am. Why is that? You can't publish them on Twitter. They are copyrighted uh, in the name of the preparing engineer, and you can't publish them without the engineer's permission. Will they be published after you post the book? Yes, after they're recorded, they become public record and are subject to the public domain. That is correct. We'll vote to either approve or disapprove plans. That's correct. Okay. So my question is, if you approve this tax reduction of, of the entertainment tax from 5% to 3%, are you going to push that burden of, of 2% onto the uh, citizen tax burden? That's not my intention, no. Where's the money going to come from? None, well, number one, I don't even know what money we may need right now at this point. We're still reviewing budgets. We haven't gone through that process. Okay, it looks to me like on the agenda that you're going to vote on it tonight. That's a good possibility. That is correct. So what's the logic in reducing it from five percent to two percent? It was never an it was, it was passed and never enacted. Never, never applied. Never, never applied. So we haven't actually gotten any funds from it to know what we do. <laughs> I don't know if you heard that conversation. It was never it was never approved and never uh, adopted officially so we've never really received any funds from this amusement tax that you're speaking about uh, i'm just going to jump in here if i may uh, the ordinance was adopted it was never enforced ma'am and uh, it was delayed several times and uh, we've been under very many discussions on how to do it and uh, at our last discussion um, the consensus was, and we don't know because tonight we still have to go, but the consensus was to go with 3% and not break out the room, the amusements with the room. One of us wanted 5% and do break it out. One of us was willing to compromise with 5% and don't break it out. 
and we don't know exactly how that's going to go till tonight. But um, I am pushing for the five percent break it out because I think we need all the money we could get. But that because I I agree with you. Where's the money going to come from? But we'll, we have to wait for the vote. Do you have any other issues, Mav? Yeah. Uh Thank you. Yeah, just spell. And, uh, well, I, think, where, uh, I heard the roll call. Is there any absentee tonight? No. And can you spell your name for the uh, for the official minutes, please? Certainly. N is in Nancy I L E S. Did you have any other comments? No. Thank you very much. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Is there anybody else who has any comments? Before we go on, I mean, we could barely hear that. We need to do something better than, I don't know what the problem is, but the volume has to be pumped up or something. But the whole technology hear. needs to be changed. What's that? The whole technology needs to be changed. You just heard this resident saying, why, why, aren't, why aren't we on Facebook Live? Why aren't we, uh, what? So that's the well, issue. The technology is called Zoom. Z is in zebra. Oh. Yeah, well, it's a little bit more. It's a little bit more than that, I believe. And I'm not. An, I'm not an expert. But uh, thank you for your comments. If I see, if I don't see any more comments, I'm going to continue with the meeting. Is there any more comments on, on the uh, uh, dialing number? Thank you very much. Under announcements, an executive session was held on Thursday, July 20th, 2020, to discuss potential litigation and personnel issues. Mr. President? Yes. Our meeting is July 16th, today's the 20th. Our virtual executive session, or our phone telephone was Friday. Executive session was July 16th. The executive session was held Thursday, July 16th, 2020, to discuss potential litigation and personnel issues. Township residents are encouraged to please respond to the 2020 census by going to www.2020census.gov. It is critical that Pocono Township receive an accurate census count so the township receives the state and federal funds due to the township for the next 10 years. If you have not already, we would encourage you to sign up for the township newsletter at www.poconopa.gov. Follow our Facebook page for frequent community updates and subscribe to our township-wide Savvy Citizen notification system at www.savvycitizenapp.com. Um, I believe we have a hearing tonight for Ordinance 2020-04. I'm going to tell them about the contamination. Motion to adopt Ordinance 2020-04 amending Article 4, Benefits, Selection 4.1A of the Code of Ordinance of Pocono Township pertaining to the police pension plan to reduce the retirement age. I'll make that motion. Is there a no, second? Mr. President, you have to have open to a public hearing. Open, open the hearing? You have to open up a public hearing before you adopt the ordinance. I will open the public hearing. But don't you have to have the motion first to adopt it? And then you open it up for public hearing? No, you do the public hearing, then the motion to the whatever motion. Okay, I'm sorry. Excuse me. So I make a motion that we open the hearing. I'll say. No problem. Chair Sheldon? Yes. Ellen Knott? Yes. Terry Lissowski? Yes. Steve Meeker? Yes. Rich Lubinsky? Yes. Mr. Vito? Thank you. Uh, for those on the phone, Leo DeVito, solicitor for Pocono Township. Um, the uh, current police pension is established by way of an ordinance uh, as a result of the new uh, police contract. Uh, the retirement age in that contract was reduced from 55 years old to 53 years old and uh, the completion of 25 years of service. The ordinance in front of the commissioners this evening is officially amending uh, the retirement age from 55 to 53. Any public comment regarding the, uh, the hearing? <coughs> Is there any comment on the uh, call, the, the call-in uh, line? 
regarding the uh, change in police uh, pension, the age? Hearing none, Mr. DeVito, this is appropriate for me to uh, close the hearing. Make a motion to close the hearing. I'll make a motion to close the hearing. Is there a second? I'll second. Second by Jerry. Discussion? <coughs> Roll call, please. Sheriff Goldman? Yes. Alan Knox? Yes. Jerry Lusadsky? Yes. Keith Meeker? Yes. Rich Wilgoski? Yes. I'll make a motion to adopt Ordinance 2020 04, amending Article 4, Benefits Selection. Section 4.1A of the Code of Ordinance of Pocono Township pertaining to the police pension plan to reduce the retirement age. Is there a second? Second. Yeah. Discussion. Uh, I'm sorry, I thought that was the goal we just did. I need to close the hearing. Presentations tonight, uh, Mr. Desai. If I say, is there Mr. Desai in the, in the audience? Desai. Desai, I'm sorry. Yeah. Owner of the Wine Press Inn. Discussion regarding Mr. Desai's interest in purchasing the township-owned property on Bartonsville Avenue, adjacent to the Wine Press Inn. Secrets. Control Yeah, I included copies. about demolishing the uh, wine, the old wine press in. Well, uh, I'd like to get the uh, uh, zoning process for the demolition. If I think that in my, I can start the process. But we have some drawings uh, with the township, you know. Uh, I said the previous owner has done some drawing, you know. But in order to do any development, I need to acquire the piece of land. So first step is to acquire the land, and then I can come back with the proposed plan that what I need to do is, you know, my intention is to knock it down the entire property and possibly build a hotel there, a two-time hotel there, and I've got some land in here, uh, you know, you know. Okay. So that's my game plan is um, to come here and talk about the <coughs> first thing is to acquire the piece of land and then back to them. And as soon as I have some kind of approval or room for approval, you know, I'm very happy to see that you're going to renovate the land, reclaim the land, and build something good, new, and useful. Uh, the one pressing in its day was great, but it's fallen into disrepair. Mm -hmm. My only question, my big question, and I haven't got—I don't believe I've gotten an answer from this yet from our sewer consultant is that butts up against our pump station number five, mm -hmm. which is probably the heart and soul of our sewer system. Because if that goes down, everything goes down. Because everything feeds into that before it gets pumped down into Stroudsburg. And my question, for, and my question that I need answered before I support this is, 
are we sure that we are never going to need any land to expand that pump station in the future? Or if, if anything has to be done, is there ample land now that could handle any type of uh, enhancement of that uh, pump station number five? Because, no, no, and I know you can't, and I don't think you can answer that. That has to be an internal answer. I mean, I don't think that, I don't, in my opinion, I don't think the township should hold on to that little piece of land if it doesn't do us any good. And we don't have any plans for it. And personally, I'd more be more than happy to sell it to you as long as we're sure we're not gonna need that in the future uh, as part of a, a sewer upgrade system. And uh, Taylor, I don't know if you had a chance to ask Patrick about that or not, but that would, that is my major concern. Yeah. Patrick hasn't done any formal analysis of it. When I showed him the plans, the, the proposed plans and the, the property parcel originally, uh, he had indicated that it would not impact. You know, that that parcel is not necessary, he said, when we had that conversation for the operation of the pump station. Currently. Currently. But well, well, no, in, in the, I asked in the future, would there be a need? And he said no. Now, that's not a formal analysis, and maybe it depends a little bit on how much of the parcel we're talking. I mean, I can, we can launch more into that formal analysis if the board desires, um, and I can approve that. But the, the initial conversation with Patrick was that it was not an issue for the future capacity. Okay, I just, I just want to make sure that that future capacity is just not what the source system is set up for now. I mean, there, several months ago, there was talk about Mount Pocono tying into the system too. There's all kinds of uh, rumors floating around out there and talk. I just want to make sure that we're adequately prepared if uh, there's more customers for our sewer system and if that has to be upgraded. That's, that's my concern. How, how much land do you presently own with the, with the uh, old? Uh, approximately 11 acres? Yeah, it's not all the land are usable that we are in for right. work on, and this piece of land, is, most of them are usable. I believe in the creek, my government has accounted and been regulated. For this person who owns this land, he has come from work and done some drawing uh, for us. And when I have the drawing with the township manager, we can go in here, take a look at it and see. But my belief is, county, I think some of the land is called for the county for the expansion. Well, the number one, we'd have to get a fair market value from an approved. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And then, would it be appropriate, uh, Leo, for him to put up a, uh, a, a collateral fee to, to cover the cost of that uh, inspection? And or is that something that we'd have to bear? Well, there is no land development plan, so there really is no basis to set up an escrow account. That's the cost that we would have to bear. We'd have to bear that. Sir, are you looking to require the piece of the whole piece of property that's subdivided, or, or are you asking us to subdivide a piece? Um, um, I don't have an answer for that question right now, but it's pretty hard to do. I have a drawing from the previous owner, especially the township manager. I believe it's uh, already subdivided, but I could be wrong. I'm not it, sure yeah, that. It, it was subdivided. I just yeah. wanted to know if you were going to acquire that whole piece, or you wanted us to subdivide it further. I'm open to anything. If I do need some piece of land from there, I can do what I want to, you know, in order to do demolish the money uh, for it and do something like this, I do require that it's my land. I think yeah. every one of us here would uh, yeah, probably so like to see yeah, that compared there, to the nice, way it is now. We have uh, access to 611 there, not that it's a good piece of land there. I guess if you're very serious about it, uh, I guess sit down with Taylor and, and Leo, and before we go down that road to hire somebody, you, you want them, I think, guaranteed from the board that you're actually going to move forward with it, or we're going to spend funds you know, for, for nothing. And then, uh, would there be a problem if we would put restrictions on what could not be built there? We can talk about it. Okay. No, I would love to develop either hotel to so we could see some hotel. I mean, hotel, I, I have no issue with hotel. I'm not sure what the other commissioners think. But. Or senior living, you know, something like yeah. that. A few years ago, there was rumors of other things going to be possibly developed there. Possibly, yeah. But, yeah. 
I, I just hope the board agrees that uh, Patrick ought to get more involved in it just to check out next door to make sure that whatever we decide to sell, we put a forward inside. I agree. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank you. Yes. Thank you, sir. I guess we have uh, opening of sealed bids for public works for building a partial roof replacement project. John? Yes, we, we went out for bids for the replacement of what I'll call the middle section of the public uh, works building. Uh, we received one bid. The bidder was Detweiler Roofing, and their bid, uh, their total bid, let me explain it this way, removing the existing roof and replace with the PPR panels, which would be putting a roof in kind on the building that bid was 55,200 and then to currently the roof is covered with um, foam insulation on the underside that would obviously come off when the roof was taken off to put new fiberglass R30 insulation in its place they bid $30,000 to do that uh, bringing the total to $85,200. When I had put the bid package together and I spoke to Taylor, I had estimated the uh, removal and replacement of the roof right between fifty dollars and $60,000 because I had done a similar project. Uh, I did not include the fiberglass insulation. I, I was not. I did not realize we were going to do that. Uh, so that was not included in my estimate to Taylor. I've looked at that cost. I think the cost is high. I called the contractor this afternoon, and I told him I thought it was high. Uh, he said, "Well, there's probably some room in there," but. I don't think we can negotiate with the contractor. Uh, I'm just providing this information so that commissioners can make a decision. Uh, so in summary, we've got one bid. We've got a line item for $55,200 to remove and replace the bid, or the, the roof, and to provide the R30 fiberglass insulation blankets will be an additional $30,000. Did you uh, cast a wide enough net to see if we could get anybody else to bid on this job? I tried. Um, part of the issue is that uh, I called a couple people that uh, I had success with before. They told me they would be bidding, but they did not attend the pre-bid meeting. Um, did talk to a couple people, and they're all they're all very busy. They're all having trouble getting their people back to work. Um, it, was, it was a tough time to. <coughs> put out a project for bid and to get bids in. I think that's what the problem was. The people who are working are very busy. And we could reject and bid again. Uh, I know I think Bob had somebody who wanted to bid, but they didn't make the pre-bid meeting. Um, we can try again. Um, isn't it, you're supposed to have, have at least three, and if you don't get three, you have to go out again? No, because no. you may never get three. Right, but, you then, get but the second time you would take what you get. So. Well, again, you don't have to do that. You can, okay. you can move to reject 
move to accept if that's the only bidder you know but it's the it's the pleasure of uh, the commissioner as far as whether you throw this one out and then go back out to bid and see if you can get more interest i'll be definitely going back out yeah bob is the roof is the roof just leaking right now kind of thing? Yep. the water's coming no in. guarantee that that roof won't come in this winter if we get a heavy winter uh, as John was telling you, we were up and looked at it. We were up on the roof and looked at it. There's good possibilities that the uh, poly uh, panels that are up there, the see-through panels, might just might just collapse in. Is there a reason why the person that you knew, whoever that company was, why they didn't attend a free bid meeting? Couldn't tell you. I know they were busy. That was one. Uh, they did tell me that they were going to put in a bid regardless. And did But apparently they didn't. So. They're in the same boat that a lot of others that John was saying are. They're, they're, everybody's coming off the COVID shutdown and they're really busy. John, did they say when they could start at the gig or give them a job? They didn't, but I believe they could do it. Are they, like, local? Are they local? No, they're out of Lancaster. Oh, geez. But they came up for the pre bid meeting. I mean, they obviously traveled to, to look at it and give us a prize. Right. Is it appropriate since they think there's some room in there, Leo, to go back and say, can you can't do that? You can't then, then you change the bid rule. Yeah, yeah, you can't do that. I'll, uh, I'll make the motion that we give the uh, roof replacement of Detweiler roofing out of Lancaster County uh, at 85200 to uh, replace the portion of the roof. Is there a second? So the motion fails. So now the question is, what do you want to do with the current bid? Um, I guess we'd have to stay at the bid, stay on the bid, notify them that. Uh, motion to reject. It would be a motion to reject the bid. I'll make a motion to reject the bid. And then go out for rebid. Yeah. I'll second. <coughs> Discussion. How how quickly can it be rejected? I'll put the ad in. Uh, we've got to advertise in the newspaper, but I'll submit the ad tomorrow so it'll it'll start the process right away so so my, my question is this if this roof is in as bad a shape as bob is telling us it is in even though it is we're, we're not accepting this bid we're going out to rebid we're still going to have time to get it done before the winter yes i would say we're uh even with the bidding process we should be able, I think towards the end of August, we should be able to make an award. I think the actual length of time to remove and replace the, the roof would take about a week based on some other projects that I've seen. So, uh, you know, they get, even if they didn't do it until October, I think they would be okay. So I, I think we have plenty of time as long as I get started this week. And as long as somebody rebids it. Yeah. including debt while I was in Right. I will let them know that their bid was rejected and they would like to bid again. We're, we're doing it. And I'll make some more phone calls to see if I can't stir up a few more. And maybe we can talk to the person that Bob knows and see if we can get more bids. Any other discussion? Roll call. Chair Feldman? Yes. Alternat? Yes. Chair Lewisowski? Yes. Chief Baker? Yes. Rich Holden? Yes. That's that question. Uh, in the original advertisement, it said that the award of the bids would occur on August 3rd, 2020, and that tonight was just the opening of the seal trees. Well, I, I mean, there's only one bidder, so I don't know that does it really matter. No, it doesn't. Uh, that was just to give them an idea because sometimes the board gives you two weeks to check their qualifications, uh, especially if you have multiple bidders. But. Uh, <coughs> That, that that's not an issue legally. Any other questions? Okay. Under resolutions, um, I'll make a motion to grant conditional approval of the Sanofi Pasteur Inc. D-85 solid waste recycling building preliminary final land development development plan. Is there a second? I second that. Second by Steve. Discussion. I just had a question. Fourteen. Oh, no question about fourteen. Aaron's just thirsty on the past. Thank you. 
Yeah, if anybody wants me to present anything about the plan, I certainly can. I, I think it would be appropriate if you have a couple minutes. Sure. Come up and, uh, yeah, I certainly do. And Mr. President, I suggested that Mr. Schistler stand at the podium where we have a microphone. Sure. That okay. may assist those listening okay. via telephone. And I don't know, do you want me to put the plan up? If you can. Sure. Yeah. Is there a microphone there? The plan we're presenting tonight is for a uh, solid waste building on the Santa Compastor site. It's a function they currently have on site, but they've outgrown it. Um, it's currently done in their Building 38 warehouse. It's partly a uh, warehouse, partly a solid waste building where they bring you know, all the, everything, whether it's garbage or you know, cardboard or hazardous waste, comes to this building, gets sorted out, and then properly stored and taken off site. Um, as the campus has expanded over the last few years, uh, they've outgrown that. They probably outgrew that 10 years ago, from what I understand. And now they're proposing a, uh, a 12,000 square foot standalone solid waste building that will um, hopefully you know, take care of everything they need for the expansion they're currently doing and any future expansions that they're proposing in the next few years. Um, it's, it's located in their eastern part of the campus. It's, it's already a developed portion of the campus. Um, it's mostly in a gravel area. We are going to take down some woods in order to construct it. Um, so, you know, we presented it to the Planning Commission um, and they recommended approval with, you know, the conditions that you see. Um, and we're currently under the, uh, doing the permit process with Monroe County. Uh, so we were, we were here tonight to uh, answer any questions and hopefully get a, you know, a motion to approve the project. Any, any questions from the board? I have none. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. And Matt? Yes. Curtis Yes. Meeker? Yes. Rich Wilden? Yes. Resolution 2020-15, I'll make a motion to grant conditional approval of the Santa Fe Posture Inc. Uh, perimeter Protection Phase 2 Preliminary Final Land Development Plan. Is there a second? I'll second that. Second by Jared. Discussion? I have a question on this one. On page 2, just for my own information, I think the, the very first line on the page says not to exceed one foot vertical to three foot horizontal. So that's that's one to three and then it comes down when you say two to one is the first number vertical or is the first number horizontal so well for me to explain it, it's you know the intent is the ordinance requires three to one which is three horse well i'm sorry three horizontal for every one vertical you know on side slopes of a road so basically you know every three feet you go this way you go one foot up um, in order for Santa Fe to construct the road and minimize the disturbance of steep slopes, they want to do the, the grading along the sides at two to one, you know, to prevent tearing down more trees. Um, so that the intent is two to one, two horizontal, one vertical. So you're basically changing it from a three to one to a two to one, not a one to three. To That's a two correct. To one. Maybe it's worded. Yeah, we're worded in so I didn't understand that. Yeah. Any other discussion? Roll call, please. Jerry Fowler. Yes. Emily Mapp? Yes. Jerry Stout? Yes. Keith Meeker? Yes. Rich Wilder? Yes. On your old business, motion to approve the minutes of July 6, 2020, regular meeting of the Board of Commissioners. Is there a second? Second by Keith. Discussion? Jerry Belding? Yes. Helen Gamas? I'm sorry, I'm, I'm behind. What are we voting on? Minutes from July 6, 2020. Yes. Jerry South? Yes. Keith Meeker? Yes. Rich Wilson? Yes. Under new business, there's no personnel issues. Under financial finance transactions, I'll make a motion to ratify a voucher's table received <coughs> through July 16, 2020, in the amount of $133,513.95. Second. Second. Second by Jerry. Discussion? 
Pete? Chair Belton. Yes. Ellen Ganoff. Yes. Jerry Lestowski. Yes. Chief Maker. Yes. Yes. Make a motion to ratify gross payroll for pay period ending July 12, 2020 in the amount of $131,691.96. Is there a second? Second by Keith. Discussion? Keith? Chair Belton? Yes. Ellen Knox? Yes. Jerry Lestowski? Yes. Keith Meeker? Yes. Rich Wilson? Yes. Make a motion to approve Rogers payable received through July 16, 2020 in the amount of $306,083.22. Is there a second? Second. Second by Jerry. Discussion? I have a question. Um, I looked at the bills and uh, the Dahili invoice was for $2,500, but we're paying a 5% markup and I'm not sure why the invoice said $2,500. That was for the um, imaging of the roofs, right? Yeah. So we're paying 2800 instead of 25 and I just want to know why. So with that exception. Okay. Thank you. Roll call. Jared Belt? Yes. Alan Ganot? Yes. <clears throat> Jerry Lestowski? Yes. Keith Meeker? Yes. Rich Wilson? Yes. Motion to approve capital fund expenditures through July 16, 2020 in the amount of $5,477.04. Is there a second? I'll second. Second by Jerry. Discussion? Keith? Jared Belton? Yes. Alan Ganot? Yes. Jerry Lestowski? Yes. Keith Meeker? Yes. Rich Holder? Yes. Uh, no travel training authorizations uh, under uh, my report. I'd like to make a motion to authorize the township solicitor to prepare an amendment to the township amusement tax ordinance to reduce the amusement tax rate from 5% to 3% to make further language amendments as recommended by special tax counsel, Eckerd Seaman, and to advertise for a public hearing. Is there a second? Second. Second by Keith. Discussion. I think we should go for the whole thing and if there's a lawsuit, there's a lawsuit, it's black and white. I, I mean, I just want to say that out in public instead of behind closed doors. And I'll just say, I'm trying to avoid litigation. Hopefully that we won't get into a, to get it with yet, to uh, get into some court battle over this. And uh, if it does, I'm hoping that uh, the judges see that we didn't go for, the, maybe not even the maximum, but we reduced it to a rate that uh, we feel we can get out of it. And as, as time goes on, Ellen, possibly uh, then raise it uh, a percent or two percent. But as of right now, um, I just don't feel that's appropriate. So I just don't think the judge is going to look at the percentage. He's going to look at our ordinance or the law, and I don't think the percentage is going to persuade him. The law is going to persuade him. I don't know if he'll, but is the percentage an issue once you get in the courtroom? Well, I, th I think the other way to look at it is whether or not uh, there would be a challenge. You know, you, what you're weighing, from what I'm, I'm going to speak for you, Rachel, correct me if I misspeak, please. But you're weighing, is it more likely to have a challenge of 5% than it is at 3%? And I think what Rich is saying, that it's a little bit less likely to have a challenge at 3% than you may get a challenge at 5%. And, you know, during the course of the challenge, depending on how long, the litigation lasts, then you would not be collecting any revenues. Um, and we're hoping, we have not heard a word, I know Taylor and I talked about it today, we have not heard anything at all from Camelback, uh, except for our last conversation, just to alert them that we were not going to do some standalone agreement with them, uh, but rather go to a percentage across the board so that we could achieve uniformity in the imposition of this uh, tax and have not heard a thing. So I don't know, there's been no rumblings one way or the other. They haven't reached out to me. I don't think they've reached out to you, Taylor, is that correct? Okay. I mean, I, I sat in a meeting with uh, their uh, Sarnicki, as he's called the president at Camelback, with, I believe Jerry was there, myself and, and Donna, and they uh, were pretty adamant that they didn't want the tax to happen, number one. 
but if it did, they weren't sure they were going to pass it on to their guests. They would have to pay the tax, but they would take it out of their, I guess I would call it their profits, and not pass it on. That's not our problem. I understand it's not our problem, but if you raise it to 5%, they're not going to have any choice, or if you raise it to 10%, then they're going to have to pass it on, and they feel it's going to, it's going to place them out of the market. I'm just telling you what they say. Well, my, my feeling is, is that the resorts have uh, taken advantage of the township and the township taxpayers for a very long time. Uh, a lot of our resources, police, fire, uh, go to support those resorts without the people that are in those resorts paying part of the bill. And I think a tax like this is geared towards people that use that facility paying their fair share to support the township which supports the resorts through services. And I don't think that if they are going to challenge 5%, I think they will also challenge 3% and we're gonna be in the same boat. So I, I do agree with Ellen on this, that we should go through the whole thing, go through 5% because we know we're gonna need this money when it comes to budget time. Uh, and if it's there, it's there. If it's not, it's not. But it's not gonna be there at 3% and not, and not there at 5%. So I support the five percent, not the three. Okay. Any discussion? There's a motion on the table to reduce it to three percent. And add the additional tweaks as provided by tax special tax council. Correct. Roll call, Mr. Speaker. Chairman Fowler. Yes. Ellen and No. Jerry Ostowski. No. Keith Meeker? Yes. Rich Wolbinski? Yes. Mr. Wolbinski, can we uh, also do a uh, motion to advertise the solicitor to prepare that amendment and to have it advertised for our first meeting in August? So moved. Second? Second. Discussion? Welcome. Chair Felding? Yes. Calling it not? No. Keith Meeker? Yes. Jerry Lustowski? What was the motion again? Yeah. Authorize me to prepare an amendment, have it advertised for action at our first meeting meeting in August. No. no. And Rich Wolbeski. Yes. Uh, is there a proposed, uh, I guess, uh, 2021 budget work session date would be uh, August or Wednesday, August 19th at 2020 at 6 p.m. If everybody agrees to that, if that all works, if everybody's calendar. Okay for me. Move forward. And uh, the update LEDs is still sitting there with COVID stuff with uh, waiting for uh, that one company to get their number. That's all I have. Mr. Bell. Uh, <clears throat> I do want to uh, thank our public works uh, director, Bob Sargent, for uh, his very hard work on the low volume uh, grant project for Park Lane. Uh, I was awarded. Um, Bob went to the classes for it uh, when it was first laid out two years ago, and he saw it from uh, start to finish. So uh, his diligent efforts to save the township $85,000 with this grant. Um, <clears throat> aside from that, as we all know, the governor has put new restrictions on inside gatherings with the uh, COVID-19 back on the horizon. Uh, no public gatherings of more than 25 people in a room, hence why we have the limitations on the room today. Uh, so I cannot show I have any present. Ms. Um, well, I, I was going to bring up the budget, but we have a budget uh, work session, so that's good. Um, I think, I think, well, the president already can come up with the budget work session, but in going through the bills today, I noticed that we pay an installment fee when we pay our insurance and installments, and I'm thinking we could save that pay and just pay it all, and we don't need to make payments, but we can look at that later. Uh, nothing on the Pocono Manor fire. 
Uh, Mrs. Farrell, if you're listening on the phone, you'll be happy to hear that PennDOT is saying that the Sykes Tunnel will be finished by the end of this week, the 24th, uh, barring weather or anything under the sea. So that should help the back roads, Long Road, Cherry Lane, and all those people who use that uh, back way because the tunnel is closed. And uh, the last thing I have is, I know we talked about it the last time, the short-term rental on the back way. Has that been taken to court yet? I believe that was one of the ones that was filed against uh, the their civil action filed. Has, and how long does that take? I went by, I went, uh, just out of curiosity, I went by there Sunday morning and uh, there were five or six cars from out of state there. And I'm sure that exceeds the capacity of that home. And plus it's not supposed to be a short term rental in a residential area. And I was just wondering how long this, this process is going to take. I'll, I'll have to look, I'll have to check with Sean on that. Um, I think it's really up to the discretion of the court in terms of how fast they move the process along. Uh, and there's certain cases they're not hearing right now, and there's other ones that they are. So just they were the window open to file everything. I just don't, I don't know without getting through a little more digging how quickly they'll act on that. If you could just find out for us, I would appreciate that, Taylor. Thank you. That's all I got. Gary, would you be okay if we asked Taylor to send a letter to Pocono Manor regarding that uh, fuel? Uh, I, I would do that through the fire company first because that's an issue between the fire company and Pocono Manor. And mm -hmm. I know the chief has been in touch uh, with the, the people at and the, or the insurance company for Pocono Manor. Okay. And, but then if, if, if the chief says fine, do it, and he supports that, that's fine. But I'd go through the chief for that. Well, and talk to the chief and see if he wants to write a letter. Sure. Okay. Mr. Meeker? Nothing. Uh, under reports, under zoning, there's nothing under emergency services. Uh, no, Mr. President, we, we do have Mr. Sayre here to do a report from the uh, fire company. Oh, okay. Hey, ladies and gentlemen. I'm here representing the Pocos Township Volunteer Fire Company with their bug report for June 2020. Um, they are as follows. 15 commercial fire alarms. We had four residential gas alarms, eight residential fire alarms, one EMS assist. We had one commercial structure fire, five residential structure fires, one unknown type fire, four vehicle fires, three motor vehicle accidents with entrapment, one road closure due to MVAs, one MVA with injuries. We did one odor investigation. So the total calls for the month of June was 45. And I'll present this for your minutes. Uh, public Works, Mr. Sergeant. Good evening, Board. Uh, pretty much let's, let's jump around here. Uh, 2020 road paving projects. Uh, they have, they, and they were completed today, uh, which leads me into the road crew projects. The road crew has been working primarily on getting shoulders on everything that was paved. Uh, they are probably about roughly halfway through it. Uh, and that will continue probably for the next week and a half until it's done. Uh, we're gonna go past Robin Lane and we'll come back to it. Uh, lighting and MVP, or MVP and Heritage Center is complete. Uh, for anybody who drives by there in the evening, it is, uh, it is really bright now. Uh, Jerry, there shouldn't be any problem for elections this year. That's okay. That's pretty well lit up. So thank you. Uh, as a uh, park lane culvert replacement, as uh, Jared discussed or, or uh, congratulated me, thanked me uh, on, we did uh, get the grant for the project. Uh, I will be in touch uh, with Missy from Boucher and James tomorrow to further this on. Uh, I know she did probably get the email on it. Uh, I think most of the preliminary plans are done it's just a matter of getting the permitting, DEP permitting, uh, and then we can move on with it. Uh, the well work at MVP, uh, the well is in, the plumbing is in, uh, pretty much our downfall right now is DEP. Um, Mr. Munoz has tried to get in touch with DEP several times. Uh, we're not getting any response out of them that I know of and uh, pretty much we can't open the bathrooms until we have DDP's blessing, so. I, uh, I talked to Taylor and Toledo before the meeting. Uh, I, 
plan on trying to track down the supervisor of this person that refuses to uh, get back to Taylor mm -hmm. regarding getting the final permit to see if I can put some, uh, you know, whatever, to get this gentleman to call us so we can issue the permit to get everything opened up there. So I'll do that tomorrow. Okay. Uh, moving on, uh, Robin Lane. Uh, discussion last month, uh, our last meeting. Uh, Mr. Tressler and I were up and looked at it uh, about what, a week ago, weren't we, John? Yeah. Uh, pretty much we've come to the conclusion about uh, basically upsizing as we go. Uh, starting out with 15 inch pipe out of the box, uh, upsizing to 18 inch, and then uh, changing. There was concerns about two wells on uh, people's properties there. Pretty much we're planning on now piping it completely pass them in between both wells down the property line. I have, uh, I did speak with two of the property owners. Uh, I am meeting with another one in the morning. Uh, I'm gonna go knock on the other one door that's there to see about that one. Uh, and then at that time I will get back with Leo on, on uh, people's names and addresses so that we can get uh, the stuff done in a legal manner. Uh, to change that, pro that, that process around uh, to upgrade in piping, to take the piping down over the hill. Uh, originally we were at $14,054.40. To change that now we are going to be at $24,604.88. And you don't have confirmation from all the property ownership? I will get confirmation from them. Uh, pretty much, I'm going to get names and addresses and uh, get their rough. Sounds good to me. Uh, be you know, be a salesman and put them in touch with Leo, or have Leo get in touch with them. I will get their names, addresses, and phone numbers, and then hand them on to Leo, and we can work on getting the legal paperwork done from there. So far, the two people agree with this. Yeah. Yeah. Or verbally, that is. Yeah, verbally, that is. Since the amount's now over threshold, do we have to bid this out? Well, this is this is materials only. This is right. no labor because this but is all new being construction. This isn't there now. We're putting in new. But this is all being done in house. The labor's being done in house, but the question is, you you should bid the materials and see what you can get a competitive material for. Well, I can, but I doubt we're going to get any better. I mean, even. Even last year when we were getting uh, our HDP pipe from uh, Shimong at a price of eight dollars and some cents a foot, I could buy it from Fry's Plastic for the same price we're paying this year, seven forty five. Does Fry's go through as well? Fry's, yes. Let me check on the co stars. I know they bid cog. They usually bid cog. The problem with the cog is is nobody nobody bid on the HDP pipe this year in COG. There's a lot of stuff that COG did not get bids on this year. So an HDP pipe was one of them. Guardrail is another. So let me check on to see whether they are a co-star. And I, I get another price from Shimon. They're the only other company that's handled it. So. Well, now Colton needs them as bids. Right, unless it's coastal. Unless it's coastal. <laughs> If your coast is authorized, then that's the answer to that. But but that still doesn't prevent you, Bob, from Shimong and this other people comparing their prices. Yeah. So sometimes the prices are different on coast And you can still call them, right? Just uh, a telephone call to get yeah, a good it's, price. It's a telephone call. Yeah, but you, you want to see make sure they're authorized coast stars. Yeah. You want their number. Well, I think I think the other thing that Alan's getting at is 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 about it being over the twenty thousand dollar threshold. Uh which I, I understand where she's coming from, but it's also being done in house. I mean, it's you know I can get the price uh, if it's going to sway it, you know, a couple of hundred dollars, a couple thousand dollars, one way or the other. I mean, that's not a big deal. There's only two 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 suppliers in the Northeast that I know. Of. One is Shimon, and the other one is Fry's Plastic. So, and I can tell you in the past we have ordered pipe from Shimon. And we have gotten it from price. And we're just bound by the bidding rules. I'm not, it's not a matter of who you do, it's just we're bound by the law. So, you don't have to, your price 
The only thing that's bid on in this price is the uh, the aggregate, as far as the two ADR fours and the nine point five millimeter, and they were already the the prices that were approved by the board in the spring. So. I'll get a hold of some of them, Mar, and I'll get uh, a secondary price. I'll get them to send it out to me in uh, in uh, by square foot or by footage. We can give them a whole list of materials what we need. Yeah. I'll give them a whole list and they'll just send everything to me by the foot and <coughs> the individual cost uh, for each fitting, so on and so forth. And then call the other one and do the same thing. Yeah. Now, Bob, if I understand, the bidding is only for the pipe. Right. Because you already have the stone, we've already approved the stone bid. Correct. Right. And that's that, and you'll go to that, the lowest bidder that the township approves to get all the aggregate, right? Yeah. To get the aggregate. The HB pipe. We'll look so about the the next meeting and we'll, uh, we'll do it from there. I mean, I'll get the, the uh, bids on the pipe and then we can make a decision. Just make sure the co stars are okay. Yeah. Well, if they're co stars, we won't have to. Yeah. Well, just but, but, but yeah. make sure. We need to approve the additional funds or we can just make a motion to approve the whole project over again. Yeah. Um, I don't know that you have a price to approve it. I think maybe August meeting or the third. Bob will have that information. You make your motion. No, because, because of the pipe. Because of the, uh, the pipe. Yeah. Say there could be a difference in price or, but not. I, I can't tell you that until I call your mom. Okay. So you mean twenty-four thousand six zero four eighty six is out. Okay. What else we have? Uh, the only other thing was a discussion regarding the uh, uh, marathon power sprayer attack distributor. Uh, it's actually a tack distributor, power sprayer, I live that end, do it. Uh, we did, I did get a price, um, I think Taylor probably has it in the packet, uh, on a brand new one, uh, and a brand new one has a one year warranty. Uh, I didn't get the warranty policy till today, uh, which Taylor, I gave Taylor a copy earlier this evening. Uh, it's probably not in your packet. Uh, but the price for that unit, brand new, would be fifteen thousand five hundred dollars. And the used one was thirteen and change, right? Was the used one was well, no. that was multiple used ones. The the one that was discussed last board commissioners meeting was nine thousand and change for I believe a twenty sixteen unit that was in relatively like new condition. So at that meeting, they were asked to look at the warranty, whether it would be worth going with a brand new unit. So I think, you know, I think that would be a decision for the board as to whether, you know, I mean, now we don't even know if that used one is still available. There might be others comparable in that nine and 10,000 range. So I think the board have to decide whether a one year warranty merits the additional five to $6,000 of cost. If I can interject on that, the, the largest moving part on this object is a, uh, a Honda, probably 10 horse motor, or motor. Uh, you can, you can purchase Honda motors from a couple of different suppliers at anywhere from four to seven hundred hours. Uh, the only other things that go wrong with these things is the, the, the nozzles. And most of the time it's just because they weren't clean, they get gunked up, you clean them out, uh, usually with some type of a medium, kerosene, something like that, and you move on. Uh, again, the $9,200 one, I can't tell you whether it's still available. I did speak with the salesman today again, uh, and he said they, they do have various ones that they that they had on the line last year that are now in their rental fleet and they would gladly sell one out of their rental fleet uh they go for anywhere around right around twelve thousand twelve four sixty two twelve three fifteen they they have several so that's pretty much for the board to decide i mean it's operating parts about the only thing I can think of that we would ever have to replace would be 
I'm out of Open Blake and Board. Taylor, have you looked this over? What's that? Have you looked this over? What do you mean? Financial. Well, we, we have funds that we can move out of our capital budget if that's a priority. Um, as to the equipment line on it, we don't have to fund specifically. But there are funds, but that, that's, I think that's maybe part of a broader discussion about what are our remaining capital needs and focuses for this year. I believe there's about a quarter of a million dollars currently that has not been, there are projects we could put those funds toward, but they have not specifically been undertaken. Are we going to actually use this this year or are we going to take it? And this is something that we could wait till our August meeting to see if we can actually afford. We just added $10,000 to the pipe project. We just added well, 10000 to the what? To the pave project? The pipe. The pipe. Right. You change the pipe. Right. Yeah. And, that, and that would be a capital expense. Mm -hmm. uh, do I have plans on using this? Yes. Uh, the the plans are to do at least the one development this year, uh, which would complete my one complete area that I need to complete. Uh, basically, the the materials would come out of my general budget, would come out of my uh, um, aggregate materials. So there's that's already been budgeted for. It's just this: if we don't pack everything that we pave, I'm told within some learning now that if we don't, even if we do patches, and we go out, we don't pack around that patch, or that patch to adhere to the original blacktop, we could lose liquid fuels money on that whole road. Not just where the patch is, on that whole road. So if we would do something on on uh, the road back here, yeah, I forgot the name of it. At any rate, the one of the roads back here, we do that road, even if we do a 300 foot patch on it to cure pothole problems or to level it out. If we don't put tack down, we could lose liquid, and they come out and test it, we could lose liquid fuels money for that road. Even if we don't use liquid money on that road? Yes. It's not that they're not using, that we're using the liquid fuels money on it. We get liquid fuels money to put towards our other projects. And if we don't do what the state requires us to do on our roads, like TAC, in order to keep that, it, what TAC does is binds blacktop together. And it's like a glue, right? So if we don't do that, and, and a perfect example I can give you is Beeler Road. Beeler Road coming up off, up off of, uh, yeah, Bartonsville Avenue, there's a spot there that kept bubbling up for probably two years, kept breaking out. When you went down there and you looked at the old road, the old road had no tack on it. There was no tack on it. It's just a spot that kept breaking out because there was nothing there to adhere to. Patched three times in one year. Yep. Bob, do you go and look at these things before we buy it, or is it sight unseen? I can. Well, no, I, I would hate to invest $12,000 into something that nobody's taken a look at or started up or no I would, the high suggestion would be to go look at it to make sure it's not all banged up bent up and you know broken and bruised yeah i mean uh, if if you went and saw it and it looked like it was a good piece of equipment i could understand spending twelve thousand dollars for it but if not i'd just as soon buy the new one with the one year warranty and, and use it as much as possible in that one year to uh, so if it breaks Somebody else pays the bill to get it fixed. And if we buy it right now, we don't want to get the rest of this year out of it. Mm -hmm. And then you get just about most of the next paving season out of it also with the one with the one year warranty at this time of year. So I think maybe it's worthwhile just buying a new because God forbid whatever's hidden under the covers, so to speak, with a used one, we're stuck with it. Even though if it is a pony motor or a spray jets or whatever, God knows what else is in this thing too. And chances are when they put something in their rentals from just because somebody didn't buy it. Yeah. And then God knows how it's handled and taken right. care of. Uh, I'll make a motion that we uh, purchase a new uh, tax, tax, what is it called? Tax distributor. Tax Charlie. distributor, $15,500. Is there a second? I'll second that. Mr. President, if I might, yeah. are these co is this guy co star? No. Oh, we're going to have to get three quotes on that same piece of equipment. There's only one other company that has them, and that's SEI. And they're not co-stars? That SEI is, yes. 
Have you checked the for request? Uh, I really don't. I don't need to. I already know what a neighboring township pays. They pay the same price. You, you need to have that in your file. Yes. You need, you, you need to get yeah. that. I Before you can it. access, you need to have it in your file yep. to show that you went out. And so long as that's the only other place around, only other code store vendor that sells it, you still have those. Yep. Especially since this guy's not code store. Yeah. Okay. That was that was asked. I asked that right flat out, Leo, when I first started with him, and I said no. And the only other company that around that has them, uh, and I can't tell you whether they have them in stock, is uh, a company Stevenson Equipment that we deal with on a regular basis. Are they code stores? Yes, they are code stores. But you don't know what their price is. Uh, I know they were right around the same price for a neighboring no, township. Not around. For it's got, it's not around. It's got to be. So. I I'm being vague about it because I'll find out. Well, I know, but before, get a written, we, before we move forward, we, we yes, need to... Yes, I get a written quote from them, so... And then we'll bring it back to us in uh, August. No problem. We'll draw the motion in a second. Yeah, I'll withdraw my motion. I'll withdraw my second. Anything else? That's it for me. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Munoz, manager's report. <coughs> We received notification that we got a $1,200 Main Street grant from the Greater Lehigh Valley Chamber of Commerce. Um, that they've made grants up to $2,000 available for municipalities to um, do a number of projects on, in their community. And we applied for uh, those grant funds to help cover the cost of some of the benches that we already plan you know, to install at the TLC Park. So we'll be able to get um, I'm not sure the exact credit it's, it's either three or four benches out of that amount plus a couple of remaining that we have on the original plan um, there is going to be a um, kind of a uh, award a, a special program to award those funds uh, one to two representatives from our municipality are invited to attend so i can get some information to the board if anybody would like to make that, um, that trip with me down and it, it is towards the end of august I'll get that out to you. Um, an update on our pending grant applications. We have <coughs> submitted a number of applications. Um, the Arley grant has been submitted. That is the automated red light enforcement grant that will be for traffic up, uh, traffic upgrades, traffic light upgrades at the Rimrock Road intersection of 611. We also have a multimodal transportation fund um, grant that will be submitted this month. There, we anticipate awards being made later this year, um, well into the fall. On that one, also that that grant will also be for upgrades at the Rimrock Road intersection, and completing the trifecta of grants for that. As mentioned before, uh, we'll, we're beginning to work on an LSA grant application as well to fill in the gaps with that intersection. Uh, LSA being the, the monies that came that come from the Mountain Area Gaming Funds. Um, just for the public's uh, awareness, there is a $2 million improvement plan for the Rimrock Road intersection. $900,000 has already been obtained through grant funds. That is to install two turn lanes uh, at, that look, at that intersection and also upgrade the light so that it speaks with the apartments bill. I say speaks, but works with, speaks with the lights further up in Bartonsville towards Route 80. So it would help allevi uh, alleviate congestion on that corridor. We also had, uh, we've also now formally submitted the federal grant for uh, PJJWA, the Pocono Jackson Joint Water Authority. That grant has been submitted. Uh, we also received notification from ESSA Bank that they have formally agreed to provide a loan as match funds for that grant, should it be received. Um, actually, that's. Uh, there's two grants that were submitted for the PJJWA, small water and sewer through the state, and then it's federal grant. And ESSA agreed to provide the match should those funds uh, be, be received in the future. Um, we're also working on a Greenways, Trails, and Recreation grant that will accompany another grant that we submitted through DCNR for upgrades again to TLC Park. Um, there on that various, the various plan items that we have there, whether it's the dog park, uh, or the splash pad or other items that we have. Uh, we have uh, two grants in the, the DCNR grant we submitted already. 
And if you're successful in, in receiving funds from this other grant program, different department, we can actually use this grant as a match for the first grant. So we would not have to outlay any of our own cash. Uh, and the last thing that I want to update you on the grants, uh, it's been asked in the past, are there, is there a way for us as a township to receive grant funds and not have to put the bill on the front end and wait to be reimbursed until the very end of the process? And I did confirm that when we are notified of a grant award, there's, that is the time where we can actually work with the state agency that's awarding the grant to work it out so that as a project progresses, we submit invoices to the state and they pay directly on those invoices so that we're not outlaying large amounts of cash and just skipping in limbo waiting for reimbursement. Right. So, and, and as part of our uh, current contract and retainer with our grants consultant, they do help, that is something that they will work on um, administering. We can actually leverage them to help with the administering of those grants as well and helping kind of cut through the red tape of dealing with the state agency. So um, that's a good thing for us. Uh, just want to notify you that Commissioner Belden completed the Class AB operator training required for uh, operation of our underground storage tanks. I recently certified as a Class C operator. Uh, he would be our AB operator and um, those are both certifications necessary to ensure that uh, any incidents, potential incidents, are prevented or responded to accordingly if, heaven forbid, there was any sort of fuel spill or fire or any other issue back there. Uh, we're still working on getting some more of our either staff or the, uh, we would like to have a conversation with the fire department as well since they also use our fuel pumps. We'd like to make sure that we have additional individuals certified in one of those trainings so that no matter who it is filling up, there's someone that's educated as to how to um, shut off the fuel supply, who to notify, and how to uh, control any potential spills. Um, <coughs> congratulations on that. I know you're just mostly in training program, so I'm going to ask you something about um, Oh, do you need special insurance then? Like, are we getting rid of, oh, I know this, I'm like, are we getting rid of our current AB operator then that we, don't, that we pay? Are you taking his place, or do you need in addition to him? It's my understanding that we can act, we actually can, when we have individuals certified with as an AD operator, you do not have to pay that 250 a month to somebody just to be an operator. So that could be a cost savings for us. Okay. And then they would simply be, they would be the professional entity that we rely on, you know, after the fact or to come out and do um, different inspections that you have to have specific uh, certifications to do. So, so do we need an insurance policy on Jerry for that? Probably talk to Rob Thompson of our insurance agent, tell him what we have and see if we need to do something, tweak our coverage one way or the other. Okay, we can do that. Uh, next, uh, you'll notice that fireworks, fireworks signs were placed along 611 uh, going north and south notifying residents that uh, fireworks are indeed regulated in Pocono Township. Uh, there was also a summary posted on the homepage of our website and residents are directed to go there off of that signage uh, in order to review the specifics of what that ordinance entails. And we also sent out notifications through Savvy Citizen. I'm looking to get that on some billboards as well, uh, some of the digital boards that people are aware that they're regulated. Um, you know, just for the public, um, you know, we've received lots of fireworks complaints. Um, the, the township relegates fireworks to uh, the main holidays of the year being July 4th. Um, now I'm testing my memory of the ordinance, but July 4th, I believe Labor Day, Memorial, Memorial Day, Day and New, New Year's. Year. Those are the four days a year. Um, not in an effort to trample on individuals' rights, but to protect the rights of those that live in what would some would classify as war zones um, mm -hmm. on the days uh, on the days that individuals are, are putting fireworks on. So we want people to be aware and the information is readily accessible to review what our policies are. Uh, Enterprise Enterprise Fleet Management, we're still working on them uh, with on that um, conversation. Uh, as we head into budget season, we're going to continue to evaluate any savings with leasing our township vehicles instead of outright purchases. 
Uh, I did check with some contacts at the county. They currently use Enterprise Fleet Management for all of their sheriff's fleet vehicles. They said it has been a benefit to the county. The county can certainly talk more about that as we undergo budget preparation. Uh, just a reminder, as was stated earlier in the beginning of the meeting, 2020 census response, we encourage all residents to please reach out, or to please complete your census information. Uh, you can do it via phone, smartphone, online, um, and, uh, if, and uh, via mail uh, to do that. Um, we are still lagging behind, I believe, countywide in those responses. And we don't have an accurate census, uh, census count that impacts the state and federal monies that we receive in the future. Uh, there was a regional comprehensive plan meeting this, uh, this month, the first one since COVID hit. It was only the second one that's been hosted overall uh, over roughly the next year, um, 10 to 12 months. We're gonna be having a number of um, meetings with our three other regional partners, Hamilton Township, Stroud Township, Stroudburg Borough, and then ourselves. We are part of a four municipality, uh, multi-municipal comprehensive plan. So we'll be kind of uh, getting down a nitty gritty of, of um, what, we, what our area currently is and what we would like it to be or continue to be or change to in the future through that process. So the next meeting is Thursday, August 20th at 6 p.m. Uh, any board members are welcome to attend. Uh, we can have as many, really as much representation as we'd like there uh, to talk about what folks would like to see um, in that partnership. Uh, and then lastly, we just, we're continuing, no real update, but we're continuing to follow our MS4 requirements for year two. That's it. Thank you, Taylor. Uh, Township Engineer's Report, Mr. Preston. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, St. Paul's Lutheran uh, Drainage Basin, they did retain Deanna Schmoyer to uh, evaluate the basin and come up with the design. She contacted me. I discussed some parameters with her, and uh, she's going to keep in touch with me as she develops the design, so that's moving forward. Uh, the roof replacement, I think we've discussed that, and the other three items, I have no update. Uh, on Archer Lane, I can tell you that uh, I talked to Sean McGlynn today on several issues that he and I are working on. Uh, the attorney requested a code of appeals uh, board appeal form, and that has been sent to their attorney. So I suspect we'll be hearing something from them shortly. They may have to have a code appeals board hearing. So we may want to make sure that those that have been previously engaged in that are still willing to be engaged in the code of appeals board. Uh, Mr. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, the Pocono Township Planning Commission has forwarded to you, and it is a uh, attached to the agenda package, their recommended amendments to the Township Junkyard and Junk Vehicle Ordinance. Um, the Township Planning Commission asked that it be brought to the board. I don't know if there's any questions or comments or whether the board is prepared to act on it this evening, uh, but they are those, what you have here are the red line changes that uh, the Planning Commission believes should be added to uh, our junk yard and junk vehicle ordinance. That's the pleasure of the board. Leo and John, have you looked this over? John was involved at the planning commission level, yeah. and I've looked it over also, yes. Yeah, okay, good. I'll make that motion. And can we make the motion to authorize the solicitors to advertise this for uh, hearing? Yes. Thank you. I'll second it. Discussion? I don't think you really had a chance to look it over that closely. From what I could see, Leo, what it does is make it more, make the uh, ordinance more restrictive. Correct. Yeah. Since this was possible, do we have to open this up to the public meeting? It wouldn't hurt if you wouldn't mind. Is there any public comment regarding the uh, updates or additions to this uh, motion? Anybody on line in or on phone call that wants to make a comment regarding it? 
Hearing none and seeing none, a uh, motion has been made and seconded. Uh, roll call, please. Jared Drobin? Yes. Carol Lena? Yes. Jerry Rostowski? Yes. Keith Meeker? Yes. Rachel Wilder? Yes. Uh, the next item, Todd Weissman, solicitor for Jackson Township and I have been working on a required amendment so that we can acquire, we being Jackson and Pocono together, can acquire uh, Hamilton Township portion of the HJP Park. Uh, there is no action tonight required. Uh, Taylor gave us the update on the PJJWA. Um, there is a, finally, we have been able to schedule a zoning, uh, zoning hearing for the Johnson short-term uh, rental zoning appeal. Uh, it's been scheduled for July 30 uh, of this month, and it will be an in-person. I think we're gonna attempt to have it here at the building. This is the short-term rental in Cobble Creek, which is sort of been lingering out there. And if my memory serves me correctly, I believe it's a five o'clock start time. If anybody on the board or any other person is interested in that matter, Well, you, you, you have less zoning hearing board members. Um, oh, it's 25. It's 25, but you have less hearing board members, uh, three as opposed to five of five commissioners. Um, we're not gonna have these two here, so that's additional seats. Dean, you come to the zoning hearing board? Okay. Yeah. Um, you will have Donna Kenderdine, and then the rest is open to the public. Uh, you know, we did some, it'll be me and Sean, on behalf of the township, uh, it'll be uh, Joe McDonald, the attorney for Mr. and Mrs. Johnson. Um, so that's five uh, additional, and then the rest is made up of residents. But what do we do with that, what we're gonna do tonight? I think we, yeah, we'd have to uh, stop them at the door and tell them if they wanna make a public comment or, 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 or be sworn in to, uh, yeah. they have to wait and then someone has to leave after they made their presentation. Are, are we giving them a telephone? Yeah, one was advertised. Okay, so they'll, they'll also have the telephonic ability to participate. Um, we'll try to get exhibits exchanged so that we can put them uh, on the website or maybe even have packets at the door so that people have exhibits so they can try to follow along. I mean, if we get to the point where people are telephonic, it will become or could become cumbersome and slow the process, the hearing process down so that everybody can continue to follow along in the process. But no, yeah. Uh, we did discuss too that uh, if there's individuals who can't attend or are not feel comfortable attending in person, we would make the physical exhibits. We could print those off and have copies available at the township building in advance. So if they want to dial in then at the actual hearing. And then also assuming, I think it's safe to assume that Cobble Creek will be the entity most engaged and interested in the outcome of this. We've already had some conversations with those folks to let them know that there will be capacity limitations, but we want to make some special accommodations for if they want to be a party to the hearing. You know, if they could designate who those people would be, we'd make sure there was space for them in the, in the hall. So that's, you know, they were okay with that. And there, there could be three people or there could be 15 people. Or there could be, I mean, it's possible that we'll have enough to just seat them and it'll be mostly people from Cal Creek that are interested. So. Yeah, and uh, you know, just so the board knows, I know Taylor reached out to both the ambulance company for their uh, venue and also to McCampton Community College, and both have uh, are restricting access to their buildings uh, because of the COVID-19 crisis. So we tried, and, and uh, there was also some talk about possibly having it over at the fire department in their large area, but there we have concerns about the equipment and everything else and secure it. not that anybody would hurt the fire hose or anything, but you never know. Um, and the other one, uh, Mr. President, is just a placeholder. That's all I have this evening. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mr. Mr. DeVito. Yes. Has the uh, hearing in the Court of Common Pleas with Pocono Mountain School District been rescheduled? Uh, it has not been rescheduled. I talked to Rich today. He will be our witness. Uh, right now, we're scheduled for 2.30 Wednesday afternoon. Oh, it's still going to happen then. The judge was on vacation. He got back. He first day back in was today, and uh, my office checked, and there has been no evidence or no ruling on his motion for a continuance, even though 
Uh, the school board solicitor is uh, somewhere on a beach. So when is it now? July 22nd? Uh, July 22nd at 2.30. Okay, thank you. Monroe County Court of Common Pleas. What happened with this third solicitor doesn't show up? It's over. It's over. It's over. Yeah, okay. yeah, exactly. I mean, he's on a large firm, so I assume he'd have a body there. Oh, I see. Okay. But on the other hand, uh, but no, we've been trying. We tried almost every day last week. We were told that this judge decides uh, these types of matters on Thursday. Late Thursday afternoon, nothing. Friday afternoon, we were told he was on vacation. So I, I don't know. We're gonna try to make him in for wherever he would be. Uh, I was told that he probably would not be. Oh, okay. Which judge is this? Um, I just don't recall what that was. Thank you, Mr. DeVito. Any other questions for me? With that said, public comment. Please limit individual comments to five minutes to allow time for others wishing to speak and direct all questions and comments to the president. Is there any public comment? Please call the podium and uh, your name and address, please. Um, I'm Allison Brissini. I live on Robin Lane, and I just I missed the the last meeting regarding the pipes in the water. So I just want to understand that before there's digging, there's going to be like forms we have to sign for approval or you live on the corner, correct? Yes. Your your Paul's. Yes, he's here also. Bob, okay. you can dig. <laughs> <laughs> I just I, it went so fast through that. I just wanted to we, clarify. We, where we'll be digging on the edge of your property is actually township <laughs> right away. Okay. So we we won't be uh, we won't be going down through the middle of your property or anything. Okay. So. We're the rectangle is with the big rock already. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any other public comment? Please come with Right. Hi, my name is Victoria Kresge. I'm actually from Readers, uh, Pennsylvania. Um, I just wanted to say on behalf of the wives of the Coconut Township Police Department, we wanted to extend our gratitude for the commissioners digging in and working the contract out. It means a ton to us. Um, we're the heartbeat behind the badge. So we wash the uniforms, we deal with all the stuff they bring home to us. And when they aren't feeling secure, we're also that sounding board. So you have no idea how grateful we all are because they always say happy wife, happy life, but that's not the way it goes when you're married to a cop. It doesn't work. <laughs> so thank you, Mr. Lasowski, for all the research you did. You'll always be Mr. Lasowski to me, sorry. <laughs> and thank you to the other commissioners for putting the time in. We truly do appreciate everything that you did. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, my name is Deborah Johnson, uh, 184 Cherry Lane Road, Bartonsville. I just have a, a comment, or, or and I don't know if it's even appropriate. In light of the whole Camelback situation, and I realize that's a personnel matter, I, you know, the litigation thing. I am just wondering if it's possible or why it hasn't happened that either the chief of police or the commissioners have come out and released some kind of statement in support of our police officers. I mean, I don't think it has to be elaborate. You don't have to go into detail, but in everything else that has been happening in Allentown or whatever, you do see the chief come forward and say, you know, I, I support my officers fully, I back my officers. I, I'm just wondering if something like that couldn't be done to show our policemen that we are behind them. I think the, if you go back to the contract, it was just settled and approved and, and, and you know, negotiated between us that we do support our police officers. Oh, I'm not saying that you I, don't. I'm just watch. I'm just. I think for all of us in Pocono Township, you know, there's so much talk about it, and I, I just would. I I personally would like to see somebody from the township come forward and say, you know, it does. Like I said, I, just a simple press release or something, just backing our officers. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Any other comments? James Hagner, JMS 
Agner, ATV and Nero, 2156 BFW in Toronto, PA. I got a couple of questions. How come there's no black, Spanish officers in our I've been here 10 years? I'm just curious why there isn't an ethnic background on uh, these officers. Uh, there was a female, I don't know where she went or what happened with her, but uh, she, 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 she resigned. She resigned? She resigned. I'm she just she wondering. got a better job somewhere else in the, in the country. Good for her. Good for her. Um, that's the lady you told me about Camelback. She brought up a good thing, you know. It's a little ironic, you know, one of the officers that my wife was discussing, this is an officer that, uh, Chris Gupko, that uh, got some track record, like, you know, George Floyd. He's done a lot of unethical things in his, you know, being a police officer in his last few years, and and he did one with my wife, you know, and, you know, he allowed a heroin addict to steal her money during Christmas time. And she's got a little boy at the time, and the money took a walk. And now, you know, here he is up there beating the crap out of some kid. And I hope you as, uh, you know, you're the, like the internal affair here because you're all the commissioners, you're in charge of them. So I hope someone's going to do something about him, you know, beating the crap out of some, you know, we'll call it transplants here, you know, because we don't live here. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Can I, I'm sorry, Mr. Hanks. Can I interrupt you for one second? Well, you know, I don't know if bashing a police officer is appropriate for public It's not comment. bashing, it's the truth. Well, I, I just I just don't think that's an appropriate for public comment. I mean, if, if you if you have if you have a problem, then I would suggest you sit down with the manager. Or I've tried person. that. I've tried multiple times for the last five months. I got crazy neighbors. I got neighbors that you know during the epidemic used to talk about the COVID, right? The and governor we'll, here, and, we'll and the governor, and sir, will listen to that. We'll but, deal with it as much as possible. But the governor here, but, but, nobody but, but, ever asked, and I got some. I don't think this is the forum for you to but talk about. But it is the forum because you guys are in charge of the officers. This is the form. You you are the people that are in charge of these officers. There is no internal affairs. You commissioners are in charge of them. It, Am it, I wrong? I, I would I, I agree with what Jerry's saying, but I think if you do have a situation that you need to come back to the township, make an appointment with the manager and sit down and discuss. Oh, I love that. You know, I really would because you know what? This insanity for the last ten years is too much. Because you know what? You know, Mr. Gupko, because what I heard from Mr. You know, from, from his wife over here, she made it clear. She made it clear. Don't throw, you know, don't throw stones in glass houses, Mr. Hagner. And this came from a wife. She just spoke at the podium. So you know, everybody fears for their lives. Well, I fear for mine. I've had death threats in my since I lived here in ten years, and I'm far from okay with. It. And I'm, I'm far from okay. I pay taxes to these gentlemen. That's supposed to be gentlemen, police officers, right? I pay their salary with my taxes, correct? So I should have a say in what goes on in this township. I'm sorry if you don't like it. But I've been asking for help for over three years now. I've emailed every one of you people. And don't say I haven't, because I know my wife has. And you know what? I have a child, I have four, I have five now. I have a wife, with my, I have a little boy with my beautiful wife. Do I have to worry about one of these cops doing that to one of my children? <clears throat> See, that's how I feel. Thank you for your time. Well, I'm terribly sorry if I hurt anybody's feelings. Have a wonderful night, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Oh, guys.